Welcome to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We are here to have a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Well, hello. Hi. Welcome back to She Is. Hi. We're so glad Hi. you're here. She's here. She is here. <laughs> And there and everywhere. <laughs> we have a great show for you today. <laughs> Nicole's going to be sharing later about ow, tasting ow. heavenly manna, which is oh, going to yes. be awesome. Tasty. And tasty. <laughs> you know, we like to talk about food. We, do. we, do. we love food. It comes back food every is once in a while. Taste and see that yeah. mm-hmm. food is good. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. The and, Lord. Also and also Jesus. And also Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, but before we get into that, let's have some fun, shall we? Ah, yes. Yes. I love fun. All about the um, fun. So I came across this while I was working my day job. Don't tell my boss. <laughs> um, they may have just heard. Right. Well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm glad you're listening. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Um, so, come on. Um, yeah, I came across this because my class... They were, fifth graders are notorious for asking you fun, random things. So they'll be like, hey, did you know? And I'm like, I did not know. But now I feel like I have to fact check that because I don't know if you're (laughs) being truthful. Um, Anyway, so that brought me to an idea. And I came across, how many are here? We're not going to do all of them. Um, We're. I don't want to talk about Usher. What is happening? <laughs> um, He's performing at the Super Bowl today, if you did not know that. 105 true or false questions. Whoa. Wow. So, um, and it's just How like random. How long do we have? Trivia, yeah. Like all day. All day. I'll Good. keep talking until okay. Jamie turns off my mic. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is in our reach. So. <laughs> if you hear the click. <laughs> Time yeah. is up. <laughs> you will know. So we'll have to do the rest of the questions in the after show. Right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> in the privacy of your own home with no audience. Okay. Um, I'm just going to scroll through, you know, because these, these are fun. We could also buy um, coolers Shelf. and refrigerators and all sorts of things. Wow. Okay. The first one. So these are true or false. So you'll just give me true your opinion. False. Okay. 50 50 shot. Okay. So butterflies taste things with their wings. True. True. I'm going to go false. Uh, I feel like this is strangely specific. <laughs> so hmm, I'm on the fence because I feel like they probably <laughs> like have some kind of perception. Okay. I'm going to say true, but probably with some caveats mm. uh. okay so it is actually false uh, but it's wrong. close that way so hard. butterflies <laughs> taste with their feet what? Uh, which are attached their to wings. their wings <laughs> so it's basically the same thing <laughs> I'm joking. They're not attached to their wings. Name an appendage <laughs> they're all basically the same you know I know okay. they're scavengers like bees though right they yes. taste with their little feet. Could you it's imagine best. stepping everywhere and tasting it all? Oh, Ugh. Pass. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would never go anywhere. <laughs> you have to wear cotton candy socks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until you wear a hole in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Golf balls have 300 to 500 dimples. It's true. True. I played golf. One semester well, in high school. And you I think them? they have to have a certain amount, though. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the amount might be in that range, but I don't think it, like, I think it's consistent. It's not just somewhere in there. I like the way you think. But it does say that it is true <laughs> and that all golf balls don't have the same number. Oh. But well. you would think oh. that if they're manufacturing, it, it right. would well, follow there's a, a bunch of different types of golf. Oh, like, there's different okay. brands of golf balls, and so they each have their certain amount of dimples. Mm. And I would oh. go with Titleist if, or TaylorMade if you're going to go with oh. a golf ball. Well, like, would, like, would you the ones maybe s- select the golf ball like you would, like, your... Club. Club. <laughs> You're like the thing swing. Well, I know. The thingy. The mallet. <laughs> My golf mallet. That's a different game. It's a great game. Well, I know there are a lot of golf players who choose a specific brand. Like, they don't just go with all of them. They have like, oh, I play with these ones because I play better with them. And mm. it probably goes along with the clubs that they choose and all that. But. Oh. What do the dimples do? I mean, it helps like with the as you hit it, like the, the wind, flow, the airflow, mm-hmm. and all that aerodynamic. You're 
This is your jam. And I didn't even play golf. I was actually really bad at golf, <laughs> to be honest. But Mini that, golf is my game. <laughs> Real golf, not so much. Still use the same little yeah. dimpled The balls. driving range? It's okay. Not horrible. Right. Because <laughs> then you Maybe can you're hit people. Scoring. Is that right? Wow. No. <laughs> just yeah. kidding. Sorry. No, there's <laughs> just a lot of extra rules you wouldn't think of in golf. Yeah. Not fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, <laughs> lightning <laughs> can't strike in the same place twice. False. 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 But you always hear that that's <laughs> I know. true. That's, mm-hmm. So it actually is false that lightning can actually strike in the same place more than one time. But yeah, who It's probably that, that the up? circumstances could not be identical. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is that it? Could be. I don't I'd know. See, I this is why me. I don't test could well. Be. Like, I just, <laughs> I'm going to think way too hard about this. Like, true or false? Well, actually... <laughs> Let me tell you something. Well, it's not in the same place because it was a different time of day. So, it, you know, the location oh, the on the planet in space was right. different than wow. it was the last time. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay. Um, <laughs> uh, this, somebody, a listener, please fact check this. Uh, Scotland's national animal is a unicorn. True or false? True. That's got to be true. 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 It is true. It's mm-hmm. the official animal of Scotland. That, like... You know they're real? Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> and Sasquatch is real, too. Somebody went to heaven and saw them up there. <laughs> and then came back down and told us? What, Seriously. What is well, the rest they, of the they, they are not a crazy person. They I, didn't make it on the ark. Yeah. Aw. I'm the sorry. Dinosaurs. Where... Is, are you being for serious I, I am with me? Serious. She's got a about serious this, yeah. face on. J- this was the golf face we saw a second ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what? I don't remember the per- like. You can ask my mom and dad too. My mom and dad are Mark and Pam Davenport. <laughs> <laughs> ask them. Ask them. They lady and, yeah, she's <laughs> yeah Re- reputable. Is that, is that yes. what you? Mm-hmm. Yes, she Thank is you. reputable. Anyways, whatever visions it is. from heaven. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> and Jesus, yeah, Jesus showed him the unicorns in heaven. So Scotland there you go. was like, that one's ours. <laughs> okay. It's a heavenly um, animal. <laughs> <laughs> the Statue of Liberty is the world's tallest monument. True or false? False. 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 I'm pretty Brother sure it's the Rio de Janeiro guy. Oh. Jesus oh. the Savior. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that the, that guy, same, Jesus? The, the state of unity? Is that the no. same thing? Because no. they're saying that the state of unity is the world's tallest What monument. state is that in? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to Google the state that. state of unity. unity. <laughs> Wherever unity is. Yes. Is, is that a new state? Did we just come up with it? 50, 52, 53. We, you know, we're counting. Yeah. Well, oh, if we're no. adding. Well, isn't Puerto it's, Rico technically a state? Oh, it is. Yes. That is a is it? sore subject for okay. me. This is, a, this is this. We were doing that. Statue of Unity. Oh, okay. Oh, is that a typo? No. <clears throat> no, it's just maybe. maybe. No. Well, where is where that? Is, yeah. Statue of Unity. Where is it located? It is of. Okay, let's see. So Jamie's it's the world's showing tallest a picture. statue. With a height of 182 meters, or 597 feet, located near Kevadia in the state of Gujarat, India. It depicts Indian statesman and independence activist, some guy, Patel, (laughs) who was the first deputy prime minister and home minister of independent India and an adherent of Mahatma Gandhi. This is per Wikipedia, so it must be true. (laughs) <laughs> must be true. And there's a picture. And so there's you can a picture check it out of a yourself. guy. Yes. That mm-hmm. must be that guy that I can't pronounce his name. <laughs> Something Patel. Yes. He's <laughs> some guy Patel. Yeah, he's just he's just standing there, his hands by his sides, and he's just bald. Yeah. He's um, just bald. <laughs> he I think he is bald or has very like, you know, close wispy hair. C- <laughs> close cropped hair do. Could be a monk. He kinda looks like a monk. I don't know. Good. So I'm probably going to get a lot of corrections here, but we thank you for those. Yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. I'm just, I'm, you thank know, you I'm, for listening. I'm new to this Statue of Unity thing, so thank you for being kind. Kind. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness. Um, ooh, okay. A dog pants its tongue because it's sweating. No. True. It's not sweating. It is cooling off. It can't sweat. <clears throat> but how do people cool off? They sweat. Yeah, but that's not sweat. Dogs sweat. are not people. Yeah. But like, it's like if you friend. open your mouth, like, 
cooled you off. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> see, <laughs> I see people pants too. <laughs> okay, we we're making it so soft. <laughs> Here's the facts. Um, it's actually false. Dogs sweat through their paws. Gross. <laughs> Ew, is that why they always smell like Fritos? I've never smelled my dog's <laughs> paws, but I've heard a lot of people say that, they, that you should do that. Who, who is going to get Fritos on their way home today? Me. You just oh, ruined it. I'm sorry. You ruined it. Oh, now I feel like I'm eating dog's feet. I've never done that, but people say that if, yeah, if you smell your dog's paws, it smells like Fritos. Yucky. It's oddly specific. Like the chili and I don't cheese like Fritos, it. the barbecue Fritos, the regular. It's corn chips. Right. That's Probably what I've heard. Regular. Corn go, chips. Go with the chili cheese ones. Those are the best. Yeah, but anyway. let's say corn chips so it doesn't ruin my Fritos. Fritos idea yes, for later. Corn chips. Yes. There you, there you go. go. You just ruined mm. your Super Bowl day. Um, yeah. An octopus has one heart. False. Tr- true. False. If false, how many? I think they Nine. have three. Whoa. Wow. A lot of feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm being just, too aggressive. I'm, so I'm just sorry. watching no, no, in no. awe. They have a lot of feelings. With nine oh, hearts, I you have you. a lot of okay. feelings. Yeah. Okay. I don't, don't, I'm just here for the show. Just, <laughs> just tell me. So it is False. It has three hearts. Yes. Oh, just kidding. Maybe three. it has nine brains. I don't know. Uh, no, it has eight legs and three <laughs> hearts. How many brains does it have? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we are unlike a unlike the cow that has four stomachs. Mm, that's a hungry dude. <laughs> <laughs> they can be female, nine too. Oh, they have nine sorry. brains. Get, sorry. Wow. Why? So one for each another. leg and one for their head. I don't know. Oh, my I don't know the science heavens. behind it. But they have nine brains. <laughs> I don't understand. The internet said so. <laughs> and so Wait, many hearts. Wikipedia? It's like... <laughs> they're not... It's like they're aliens. It's almost yeah. like there's multiple in the one. Yeah, they, they, it just didn't, like, separate in the womb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like three fused beings What is what with is extra twins? brains. Octop... Oct- what is eight twins? Eight eight octuplets? Octu- octu- octuplets? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Eight twins would be, like, 16... Oh, yes. <laughs> eight pairs well, of twins. Oct, meaning eight. <laughs> right. It just doesn't Octoplets. mean twins. I, I know. I have a nine brain parts. Obviously, I do not have nine brains. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. And you only have four limbs. So. We're, we're in rape, rare form today, guys. Oh, Ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Gals. What we, about? We don't even have nine brains collectively. <laughs> collectively. <laughs> mm, Galapagos. Tortoises can go up to a year without water or food. Water. Oh, but it's a tortoise. Say Doesn't it need water? True. With where they come from. In Galapagos. Oh, I mean, yeah, they like <laughs> absorb it in the air. Oh, because it's so wow. moist. Huh. I'm yeah, I'll say true. I'm gonna say true. Yeah, too. I'm gonna say that true. horse shell. Um it is true. And yes. they also sleep a lot, up to 16 hours each day. Oh, that's I why they would be need I want to be a turtle. Can I be? <laughs> it's my spirit animal. <laughs> so they're like camels then. Because they oh, don't have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Oh, no. My brain was here. <laughs> Yet they don't have to have She humps. gave me crazy eyes. <laughs> They're just on my head. Um, <laughs> I will give them to you. Um, Humps or eyes? <laughs> so, like, are you a camel? <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> sloths can take two weeks to digest food. Oh, gosh. What? A sloth? Sloth. Sloths. Okay. This take is two weeks. Sloth. To True. This is tough. Do the, do the sloths take two weeks to digest their sauce? I'm going to say <laughs> yes. False. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm gonna false say true. as well. They will talk slow, but they can digest food fast. They move Sloths slow. can't talk. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Have you seen Zootopia? <laughs> or Ice Age? They even Sorry. work at the DMV, okay? Sorry, Sid. <laughs> they also have jobs. They even work at the DMV. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually uh, true. It says, in fact, they have the <laughs> slowest digestion of any mammal. It makes so sense. So they're just the slow, they're always on pause. They probably have so. no metabolism either. Oh, and then okay, my daughter gave that. me a, little, this is a f- off script fun fact. Um, so she said <laughs> that sloths don't, so the smile that's on their faces, yeah. it's just permanently there because they don't have the muscles to change it. Oh. <laughs> so they could be really angry, but, but they have smiling. to, they're happy about it. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. Lord, yeah. change the muscles in my face so that I just constantly so I smile. smile. Yes. <laughs> Mm, okay. Last one. So the process of creating honey involves bees' waste. Correct. 
Like, is, like their waste? Is saliva considered waste? I think yes. I'm going to say true. 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 Uh, yeah. Like, because there's, I feel like there's an explanation to mm-hmm. waste. I'll say true before you give your answer. So <laughs> it involves bees vomiting. That's okay. cool. So they saliva. consider it kind of saliva. I'll throw yeah, that really. on my Fritos later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's you might be rethinking your snack. That's great. Wow. <laughs> and you know what? You know what needs to be said. We need Let us pray. Yeah, yeah, we need to pray. Yeah, let's right? have some Let prayer. Let us pray. <laughs> Well, Jesus, we just thank you um, just for what you have in store for us today and for all the listeners um, who have joined in. We thank you for the word that you've given to Nicole and um, that it would just bless all who are here and all who are listening um, and that we would each just be able to pick something out um, of what is shared today mm-hmm. um, and we would uh, chew on it for this week um, and that it would just um, enrich us um, as we go on with our day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat today. Don't know why. Did you name him? Uh, I can't name him Herbert because we already have Herbert here. Right. So maybe Frederick the Third. Okay. Or fourth because it's Herbert the Third. Anyways. Well, we're glad to have you today, Frederick the Third. But we need you to be quiet. There we go. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Says the Greg (laughs) Shusher. I think it's time to pray. Sounds like we need prayer. (laughs) Sounds like Pastor Jerry needs prayer. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) So uh, today we're going to be talking about the heavenly manna. And I have been reading in Numbers and there's a scripture that came up and it just really struck me. And I'm like, why? Why is that? So we're going to read a lot of scripture today. Um, And I wanted to start in Exodus 16, and I might skip around here, but um, it's verses 3 through 10, and then 12 through 31, if you want to read it on your own. Um, But this is the first time that, um, or one of the times that God was um, giving them manna to eat after they came out of Egypt. And they started complaining about... um, you know, the lack of food in the wilderness. And so we're just going to start in um, uh, chapter 16, verse 3. And it says, The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. I'm like, they're being so dramatic. Oh, my word. <laughs> <clears throat> there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But, we ha- but you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites in the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Um, then Moses and Aaron, then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. Um, and I'm going to skip down here. Um, so, um, let's see that evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who had gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. 
Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began Mm -hmm. to smell. (laughs) And anyway, so I'm going to skip down here again. Um, I think it's verse 31. Um, Everyone is to stay where they are on the seventh day. No one is to go out. So they weren't supposed to gather on the seventh day. Um, the people of Israel called the bread manna. It was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. There's that honey again. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so um, why did the Israelites complain about the manna? So so this is like the first time God sent the manna, but then they were having it over and over again, and they started complaining about it. And I'm like, this is a miraculous thing that God provided for them, and they scorned it. Um, and they refused to understand the lesson of the manna. And so I wanted to read another short part from Numbers 11, um, verse 4, is where we're starting. Um, and the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. <laughs> it's crazy to me. Anyways, the manna was like coriander seed and looked like resin. The people went around gathering it and then ground it in a hand mill or crushed it in a mortar. They cooked it in a pot and made it into loaves. And it tasted something like or something made with olive oil. When the dew settled on the camp at night, the manna also came down. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance of their tents. The Lord came, became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. And so I was like, it just got me thinking, like, how many times do we scorn what the Lord gives us? And, you know, the, the manna is a representation of Jesus. He is the bread of life who came down from heaven, right? And so there's a lot of, like, correlation here. So we're going to get into some Hebrew. (laughs) Um, So the Hebrew word for manna is man, and it's just two letters. It's the mem and the nun. And so we'll just, I know that I've gone into, like, the meaning of the Hebrew letters before, like, in depth, but I just will do the surface one this time. Um, So the mem is it represents the waters of wisdom, knowledge, and Torah, and the vastness of the word of God. And so Jesus is the son of man who came down, the embodiment of the word. He is the word. Uh, um, it says in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. And then the noon is a symbol of faithfulness. And I thought that was so interesting because manna appeared every single day for 40 years in the wilderness, and God was faithful to feed his children. Um, the, the words soul, candle, and servant also start with the letter noon, and it represents breakthrough, supernatural, and miracles. So this is heavenly bread. It is a miraculous thing that God did for the Israelites while they were in the wilderness. He was faithful to give them manna every day, and he is faithful to give us the word we need every day as well. He gives us himself without holding back. So Father God was so faithful to send the bread from heaven to feed his children as they traveled through the wilderness, but they scorned it. They got bored of it and started to long for the food they had in Egypt. And and I just think it's interesting because they're like longing for all this food they supposedly had in Egypt but they were slaves. So I'm like, it can't, it can't have been that good, right? <laughs> like you were, you were under somebody else's um, will and they, they didn't trust that God would actually take care of them. Mm. So lessons from the manna. Um, the first thing I saw was God wants, God wants us to learn to trust him. He wanted the Israelites to realize they did not have to worry about who was taking care of them. They had a slave mentality. They had spent their whole lives scraping by, taking orders from someone else. They had never been cared for, and they became accustomed to slavery. So they started longing for Egypt, where they had been oppressed for over 400 years because of food. (laughs) So that was just, that's crazy to me. But how many times do we grow accustomed to lack? and poverty 
and slavery in our own lives. When there's a whole feast table, his word available to us. So I'll pause there if anyone has anything. I'm just, I'm just processing a little bit. Yeah. Um, you, it was interesting what you said about them um, kind of having this relationship to food. Mm-hmm. And I know that God, um, God led them there to begin with um, and caused them to be there <clears throat> the amount of time that they were for a reason. But the reason that the Israelites were even in Egypt to begin with was because of food. Mm, because there true. wasn't food mm-hmm. where they came from in <clears throat> Israel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, famine. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, I guess our appetite leads us. Mm. Oh, <laughs> We're going to set up camp based off of right. our appetite. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and they would, you know, it sounds like they, they were struggling with feelings of, I'd rather go back to how things were to make my tummy happy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it was comfortable. Right. right. It was predictable, you know, and I think that our fresh, our, our fresh, I'm sorry, our flesh um, desires predictability mm. and, but our flesh and our spirit are completely different. If I know with my spirit that God is faithful, that is my predictability. Mm-hmm. But if I'm, solely consumed by my flesh, then I have to create that predictability, Mm -hmm. which is interesting because the scriptures that you read, the Lord bridged both. He was feeding the flesh, right? but he was like, there's more than that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, the second thing I saw in this, in these scriptures was, um, God wants to be our portion. Manna rep, manna is a representative the representation of Jesus, who is the bread of life. So I already said that, but it was interesting to me that the manna came every single day, except for the sixth day, they had to do double, but they couldn't gather more than what they needed for that day mm-hmm. or else it would get Oil. stinky and get maggots. And I was like, why, why would he do that? Like, why wouldn't he just have it readily available all the time? And it's like he wanted to test them to see if they would obey his commands. And he wanted them to rely on him that he would be their portion. And, you know, we we see later on in when the Israelites have already gone into the promised land and they start asking for a king. God was no longer their portion. Mm. And, you know, and, and Samuel... It says, and the Lord told him, Samuel, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king. And so they're still going around the same wilderness, quote unquote, in their hearts because they're not relying on God as their portion and their leader. And um, it just really hit me as like, Lord, am I relying on you to be my portion every day? And sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't trust him the way I should. Sometimes I don't, um, I operate out of this lack of, um, thinking, you know, I don't have enough for today. I don't have enough, but that's not true because he is readily available with everything Mm -hmm. for me, every good thing for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just, uh, Psalm 119, 97 really jumped out at me. It, it says, oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Mm-hmm. That is my portion. It, the word is our portion. Um, and then the third thing I saw in this is, uh, the manna from heaven was a supernatural solution to a natural need, hunger. It wasn't really about the manna, I don't believe. It was about the Lord sustaining them in the wilderness, And I think it's interesting that it tasted like honey. And in some places it said it tasted like olive oil. So honey Mm -hmm. and oil, Mm -hmm. the sweetness of his word and the anointing. Mm. Wow, that's good. Yes. They failed to see the miraculous in the manna, just as the religious leaders failed to see the Messiah when he was right in front of them. 
They had become so tied to their religion that they missed it, focusing more on the natural, their religious acts, than on what really mattered. And that was the spiritual, that the Messiah had come. And I think it's so interesting, like the the tie between Jesus and Moses, because they both gave out bread. And, you know, when Jesus fed the 5,000, that was like the Lord saying, I'm going to take care of you Mm -hmm. and I'm going to feed your hunger. And it's through Jesus. Mm -hmm. Psalm 19, 9 and 10 says, the fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. Mm. He is sweeter than honey. Um, so Jesus brought it all around full circle. The people that had been following him were hungry. And once again, he came through and fed them when he fed the 5,000. And, and it's like, that's, that's miraculous because, you know, he had the, the loaves and the fishes and he broke them and he gave thanks and he gave uh, the people something to eat and he, they had even more left over 12 baskets left over at the end of that. And, um, and you can find that story in Luke nine. Um, it's like, he is always faithful to give us himself. He is always faithful to, um, give us what we need. And sometimes what we need isn't what we want. And, Just to be, I think for me, especially, it's just like, okay, Lord, what do I need for today? What are you trying to speak to me today? Um, And I think we can, you know, people are, you know, they tell us all the time, you know, read the word, get in the word, but it's so vital and we need it so much. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, in ending, um, we can trust him because he is faithful to give us himself without measure. Rely on him to be your portion and don't miss the opportunities to see him. Mm -hmm. So good. I was just thinking, Molly, when you said about like actually getting into the word, I know a lot Mm -hmm. of students will be like, well, I can't hear Jesus right now. And he's just not there. And we're always like, hey, are you opening your word? Are you? Because that's where he's going to speak the most. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't hear him audibly doesn't mean he's speaking. And when they air quotes, when they don't hear him, they're like, well, I'll just, I'll just listen to somebody online and they can feed me. And that's like them saying, well, I'm just going to go back to Egypt Mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. and I'll just get it from somebody else and they can do it for me. And it's like, no, you can't, you can't have a relationship through somebody else to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, cause it is uncomfortable. Like when you're (laughs) trying to hear the Lord's voice and you're trying to learn how he speaks to you, it's uncomfortable and you don't always have the feely goods. And I feel like that's what people chase a lot of the time is like, I want to feel good. But even when you get in the word and you don't feel anything, it's still working in your life. And you can be assured that there there's going to be fruit from this moment, even Mm -hmm. though I don't have the feelings right now. So. Right. Well, and I think that we forget that um, because I've been there, I've been like, okay, Mm -hmm. Lord, I've done that really fun game way early on where you like, you're reading the Bible outside and you're like, okay, wind, move the pages. (laughs) Right. I mean, I, yeah, Yeah. I'm sorry, Lord. Like, thank you for being patient because it was like, okay, Lord, so what do you want me to read today? And what's, what's going to feed me today? What, what do you have for me? Right. When I don't realize that everything I'm reading is teaching me who my father is Mm, and my identity and what those truths are so that when the world's coming against me, Mm -hmm. I don't always remember an exact scripture, but I do remember my father wouldn't talk like that. Mm -hmm. My father wouldn't do that to me. Mm, Right. He hasn't done it before. He's not going to start with me or Mm -hmm. he has done it before. Right. He's always fed them. Mm -hmm. He will always feed me. Right. Mm -hmm. So it might not be this feel good thing. Um, but I'm learning his voice. And I think that's, what's hard is that if I don't know what his voice is, I'm not going to recognize it in the world anyway, Right? Mm-hmm. not in the world. Cause I'm, but of all the voices that I'm mm-hmm. hearing, I'm not going to recognize and be able to pinpoint his, mm-hmm. if I don't even know what his tone is, right. if I don't even know how he loves, I won't, I won't know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, And so while you were speaking, Matthew 6 came to mind. Um, And this one has been, it 
speaking of the word, right? There are sometimes these little scriptures and you're like, what does that have to do with today, Lord? What does mm-hmm. that, what does that yeah. have to do? Um, and he'll just continue for me. He'll just continue to drop these little scriptures, um, oh. the same scripture over and over again right. so that I can keep nibbling on that. Mm-hmm. That's my manna, right? Yes. Until I need it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I'm not to stockpile it. Right. <laughs> so anyway, um, so just reading through this. So this is Matthew 6, 25. Um, so it says, this is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes mm-hmm. to wear. Yeah. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for the heavenly father feeds them. Mm-hmm. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon and all of his glory are not dressed as beautifully beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers Mm -hmm. that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things that dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, Mm -hmm. but your heavenly father knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above everything else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. (laughs) So good. So I just love that because it it encompasses everything, Mm -hmm. right? My flesh dictates a lot of things Mm -hmm. down to my clothing. How much time do I spend in the morning thinking (laughs) about what I'm going to put on and wanting to appease the people that see me and my thought is consumed Mm -hmm. with things that don't matter. Right. Instead, I could be getting ready for my day saying, thank you, Lord, for today. Lord, I pray that you make divine appointments. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing for me. But instead, I'm consumed about the lilies, right? I'm consumed, right. like, do I look okay? Or my flesh, right? I'm wandering around, wandering around the grocery store going, oh, well, I'm hungry. So should I have this or should we have this? <laughs> and instead right. it's, okay, Lord, make these divine appointments. Thank mm-hmm. you, Lord, for the food. Thank you, Lord, for the money. Thank you, Lord. Uh, you know, yeah. and I, that's where I think my brain and my flesh overtakes a lot of things. Mm. And I don't, I don't allow the Lord to feed me. Mm-hmm. I'm feeding mm-hmm. myself. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. What keeps coming to mind is obedience mm-hmm. and trust. Yeah. <laughs> Which usually on any given day I have trouble with both. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um because it goes back to the oh, well, I'll be obedient, but in this situation I know better. Mm. But do I really? No. Yeah. I don't. And so then I'm not obedient and then and then there have been times I've done things that I should not have, and they were stinky afterward. Mm-hmm. Oh. It wasn't a good thing. Uh, and so I, I think that over and over, when we're in the Word, the Lord, all He asks of us is love me, trust me, and be obedient. Mm-hmm. And I will take care of everything. Right. Everything. You don't have to worry, just like you just read, Amanda, and just like you're teaching. Um, and so I, I really, I'm, I'm needing to work on that because there's mm-hmm. always that one little thing that it's like, can I trust you with this, Lord? And he always says yes. Mm-hmm. And so be obedient and give that to him because then he will supply all the other needs. Thank you for listening to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep in touch between podcasts by finding us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the show notes. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week about who you are in Christ.